you're doing really, really well. Today's video is all about bike packing. So I'm going to be talking you through different setups, bikes, gear, equipment, what you should pack, how you should pack it, and hopefully giving you all the tips you need to make your first ever bike packing trip a success or to make bike packing even more fun if you're already doing it. <coughs> So first things first, what bike should you ride on a bike packing trip? Well, I always like to say that the best bike for bike packing, or not necessarily the best bike for bike packing, but the bike that you should go on is the one that you already have. If you've never been bike packing, don't go out and buy a special bike for it. You don't know if you're gonna like it, and that is just not really necessary. I wouldn't necessarily go for a full suspension mountain bike, because that is gonna be hard work pedaling anywhere. Um, but you could go for a road bike, or just any kind of city bike, really, as long as you can figure out some kind of way of carrying your gear. For me, the ideal would be a hardtail mountain bike or a gravel bike, but certainly you don't need those, so just grab your bike, check that it's all working, and you're good to go. The next thing you need to decide is what sort of luggage you want to take or how you're going to carry all of your equipment. So broadly speaking, there are a couple of different ways of carrying stuff on your bike and it is easier on you and on your body to carry stuff on your bike rather than on your person. Not to say you can't take a rucksack, you can, but um, I would say you'd be more comfortable if you can find some way of strapping your stuff to your bike. So you have pannier racks, obviously, which is the traditional way of taking your stuff when you're going out cycling. You need to have a kind of bike that can take pannier racks, that has eyelet holes so that you can mount the rack onto your bike and then put the panniers on the rack. An alternative is bike packing bags. Now these are specially designed to fit in certain spots on the bike. So you would tend to have a saddle bag, possibly a frame bag that goes in the middle triangle of the frame and then a bar bag that goes at the front. You've also got various other accessories and pouches you can get but those are the main ones. Now if you don't have either of these things and you're just going for the first time you can do a hell of a lot just using voile straps or any kind of use useful sort of straps or velcro or bungees. You can for instance get a sleeping bag, roll that up maybe in a dry sack, maybe not if you don't think it's going to rain and then strap that to your handlebars. You can also strap longer things such as a sleeping mat underneath your top tube. As long as you've got something that's going to keep it secure then there's no reason you have to have special bags at all. Generally if I'm trying to decide between uh, panniers and bike packing bags I would sometimes go for the panniers if I'm on a road cycling trip and the bike packing bags if I'm going off-road. I just prefer the way the bike handles off-road with bike packing bags as opposed to having the panniers either side. Um, I feel that the bike's a little bit more responsive with the bike packing bags. Uh, the panniers have their place, nothing wrong with them at all, but if I was trying to make a choice I'd go for bike packing bags off-road and potentially panniers on road if I needed to take that quantity of stuff. You can just use bike packing bags on the road as well. It's always a good idea to pack the stuff that you're not going to use very much in the packs that are less easily accessible or take longer to undo or do up. So I would tend to put my sleeping bag and stuff I'm only going to need once I get to the camp in my saddle bag and put snacks and things that I want more to hand such as sun cream in a zippy pocket that's either on my person or you know on the bar bag or on the frame bag. So it is worth experimenting a little bit with how you pack all your stuff because it actually becomes quite a pain in the bum if you keep having to unroll your saddle bag to take out something you need all the time. It can be a good idea to try out your bike with all this stuff strapped to it um, before you're about to head off with your mates because you might find that your bike handles a little bit differently with say lots of extra bottles of water strapped to it on your sleeping stuff or a big saddle bag. Uh, it does take a little bit of getting used to. Panniers particularly can make the bike feel quite different which is why a lot of people prefer bike packing bags nowadays but it doesn't take very long to get used to it. I'm going to keep things simple here obviously there are all sorts of luxury items you can take but first and foremost what you need is some kind of shelter something to sleep in and a sleeping pad so you could go for a bivy bag that is essentially a kind of big waterproof bag that you put your sleeping bag inside and that will to a certain extent protect you from the elements if it's going to rain a lot maybe you might need some sort of tarpaulin to go over the top so that you don't get totally drenched or you could pack a small tent 
I would always take a sleeping mat because, um, not just because the ground is lumpy, but because you get really cold lying directly on the ground, even in your sleeping bag. Lying flat on the ground, you feel the coldness from the ground, but also it squashes any filling in your sleeping bag. So it means you don't really have much in much insulation underneath you. Synthetic sleeping bags are better if it is gonna rain because they do stay warm. The down ones, not so much, although you can, of course, get hydrophobic down nowadays, but that's kind of expensive. Along with your sleeping stuff, it's often a good idea to take some clothes for hanging out in at your camp. You could pack some long johns so that you can still wear your bike shorts, just stick the long johns under your mountain bike shorts or take shorts off, whatever, you can figure that out. Um, a small down jacket might be good or a little fleece. Hats are usually quite useful because that always keeps you a little bit warmer. Um, but yeah, just a few extra bits and pieces of dry warm clothing will make your whole experience a little bit nicer. When it comes to footwear, well, sometimes, because I'm wearing clippy shoes, I might take a pair of sandals or something, but you might want to look at just wearing flat shoes like trainers so that you can walk around at your camp, or using mountain bike shoes, which are a little, little bit better than road shoes for walking about in. I mean, yeah, I just wouldn't want to be clip-clopping around at camp in road shoes with carbon soles or something. It's just not the best. It's always good to take a paper map or a power bank so that you're not gonna get lost if your GPS device uh, runs out of batteries or something. Essentially, just make sure you know where you are and you know where you've gotta go. You don't wanna be getting lost. Uh, the other thing I would always take is some tools, potentially a small first aid kit, just in case you need it. Well, you could just leave the stove at home and go lightweight, make yourself a sandwich, pack a couple of bars and some dried fruit and nuts, stuff that's not gonna get um, crushed and smashed up in your bag always works quite well. And also make sure you take a look at the packaging. I've packed um, like instant coffee before and it was in quite a thin package and it just got rubbed to death in my bike packing bag so there was coffee powder everywhere. So just be mindful of that and make sure that it's either in an extra little Ziploc bag or you have something that's robust enough to withstand bumping over loads of stuff on the way to camp. Nowadays you can get really, really small stoves that weigh barely anything and pack down really small. They're not that expensive. Make sure you remember a lighter though. So then you can take food along to cook. You can get some really nice dehydrated lightweight meals to take or take instant ramen. Those are always a good bet. Or, you know, just cook some actual food. I have been known to make a kind of lentil curry whilst I'm away bikepacking because I quite like doing that. It's good fun. After you've had your food, it's always nice to have something like a hip flask or hot chocolate. Always goes down well when you're bikepacking. It's always important to make sure you've got enough water or you've got access to water. There are a ton of different ways of transporting water. Sometimes you have to get a bit creative depending on the dimensions of your frame. Along with having your water in a normal water bottle in a cage on your frame, you can also strap additional cages to your front fork. You can put really quite big bottles of water on the front fork if you um, buy the right cages. Or you could have a frame bag with a hydration bladder inside. Or you could have bottles of water or a hydration pack in your backpack. I like to take water purification tablets so I can always get some fresh water if I run out. I mean, assuming that I come across anywhere where there's water to be purified. I think the best thing to do for a first overnighter is just to keep it really simple. You could just ride a route that you often ride, but make a break in it and stop and camp out. That way there's gonna be no um, unwanted surprises and it's just gonna be really fun and easy going. If you are gonna be camping out, check the restrictions, check that you're not camping anywhere dangerous. And what I always like to do is take a good look at my route before I set off and mark any resupply points. So you might wanna go through a town before you camp out so you can buy some beer maybe, or food. <laughs> you might also want to look for a place that's a little bit sheltered if you think it's going to be windy. Camping near water can be useful because if you've got water purification tablets or a water filtering bottle, you can get some extra water there. But obviously make sure that the water isn't going to suddenly rise, you know, there's no risk of flash flooding, etc, etc. Just do your homework a little bit before you go. My next tip for wannabe bike packers is learn some basic um, bike knowledge, some how to repair some stuff. So you really do need to be able to adjust stuff on your bike, make sure you have the actual tools that fit your bolts and everything like that on your bike. Learn how to change an inner tube, make some very basic repairs just in case, you know, the worst comes to the worst and you are really stuck. Useful to have that kind of bike knowledge and also it's going to make you kind of panic less if anything goes wrong. 
Before you go, make sure you check the weather. I like camping up on Dartmoor and the weather is super changeable. The reason I check the weather is just so that I can add extra gear if it is gonna be cold or rainy and leave stuff at home if it isn't gonna be. I mean, with Dartmoor, it's a bit of a gamble. I wouldn't necessarily wanna leave my rain jacket at home, even if it said there's gonna be no rain because you just don't know. But, you know, check the nighttime temperature, for instance, and check that your sleeping bag is going to be warm enough or that you're not lugging a huge, ginormous, extra Arctic sleeping bag all the way somewhere hot and sunny. And that's it. It's pretty simple, really, and a lot of fun. Just make sure you've got a bike, something to sleep in, and means to strap that to your bike chuck in some food and a map and off you go. I hope you have fun. I'm currently planning a mini overnighter bikepacking trip with my daughter for the summer solstice. So I'm really excited about that. Haven't yet figured out how to carry everything or tow her or what to do, but half the fun in bikepacking trips is in the planning, I think. I quite like that. Um, so I'll update you on that when I can. But in the meantime, hope you're doing well and I'll chat to you soon. Bye.